Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Floss TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. And on this day in history, July the 1st, 2003, it wasn't a very good day for uh, Kobe Bryant because there was a misconduct charge against him. So a female employee at a Colorado resort uh, basically went to the police to file a sexual misconduct charge against the basketball star Kobe Bryant on July 1st, 2003. And a few days later, an arrest warrant was issued for Bryant. And uh, the ensuing case generated lots and lots of media frenzy. Um, this particular incident really affected Kobe Bryant because he faced intense scrutiny. He lost many of, in, many of his endorsement deals as a result of the rape case because he went on to um, actually admit it that uh, he went on to admit that they had you know something together, but he maintained that the accuser. Um, or rather that it was consensual with the accuser. Um, this particular female employee had said, you know, um, Kobe Bryant assaulted her, but he insisted that it did happen, but that, I, but that it was consensual. Uh, the accuser, uh, her name and her identity was mistakenly made public as a result of uh, court's clerical errors. And this, you know, thrust her into the limelight and she began to receive many personal life and death threats. But in early March 2005, Bryant and the accuser settled their civil lawsuit uh, for an undisclosed sum. And that's what happened today in history. Sadly, he is uh, no longer. Uh, and the year 2020 uh, took Kobe Bryant, basically. Um, um, but, you know, I think we've said it before that, you know, no matter how beautiful your career is, just one tiny mistake can ruin a 10, 15, 20 year career um, where you've put in all the work and sacrifice and worked entirely hard to build. Just one mistake. Um, same thing, you know, with uh, someone, of course, that didn't make the news this morning, which is Bill Cosby. Uh, if you've been following the news also, you must have heard that he has been um, released. But of course, he made his own mistakes that ruined his career, you know, and even if he hasn't been set free from, you know, from uh, jail, he's been released from jail, you know, it's never going to be completely wiped away that he has been accused of multiple sexual assault um, mm. um, um, uh, um, crimes, basically. And same thing with Kobe Bryant. Mm. But we forget quite easily here in Nigeria. I mean, look at the Babai Jasha case with all the alleged sexual misconduct. And you have p lots of people rallying around him, supporting him. I won't be surprised if he's shooting blockbuster movies wonder... in the next few days and Nigerians rushing to the cinemas to watch despite all the allegations. So I guess it's just different different approaches to the cancel culture, um, Nigeria and over there. Yeah, you know, so I think it's, it's also because we, we, um, we're, we're really hypocritical, you know, a lot of times, and we also need to do better with um, taking a stance against certain things. Um, it's shameful, you know, when I saw the tampon, ta tampon sorry, uh, group, <laughs> And their message to those actresses, really, really shameful. I was ashamed of Judith yeah, Kosoko and, you know, and all those people there. Really, really ashamed. And it really just, for me, just meant that um, a lot of them maybe had skeletons in their closet and they had to, you know, stand for each other, you know, so that if they are called out in the future, they will be able to, you know, find somebody to defend them. It's really, really shameful uh, the, how the whole thing played out. But, well, he's been granted bail. I believe that he's still going to go back to court. And I... I hope, you know, that, um, you know, we continue with the court case. I don't want to say more than I should. All right. On this day in history in 2007, um, if you lived in England, then you must have heard that England banned smoking um, on this day, but not smoking. It wasn't a complete ban on smoking. It was a ban on smoking in enclosed areas. It, of course, um, it came with its, with its own controversy. Uh, it was it made it illegal to smoke in enclosed workplaces in England, and it came into force on this day in 2007 as a consequence of the Health Act of 2006. Uh, the ban, of course, um, uh, uh, before the ban, of course, there were a lot of people who are not businesses who in, who voluntarily introduced bans on smoking, mainly as a result of public feedback. But there was a legal blunder with this ban because there was no actual punishment for uh, flouting the rule until the 16th of July in 2007. While the ban affects almost all indoor workplaces, smoking is permitted in private residences also. And of course, uh, although it is not used in areas such as a shared workplace in flats uh, with communal entrances or shared corridors, these must all be smoke-free. Uh, eventually, I think later in the year, then it was also enforced in public tra uh, transportation um, and um, other places that had to do with the public. So. 
um, on this day, basically, the ban on smoking in England came into play, uh, came into force. I think later, I'm, I'm sure Lagos also has, a, uh, or somewhere, in, I think Nigeria also adopted a you know, similar ban on smoking. Uh, during the last administration, good luck, um, Jonathan's administration, there was a similar ban on smoking that also um, was placed, um, or you know, was thought about here in uh, Nigeria. Okay. But anyway, this happened in the year 2007. Fantastic. And uh, after about 10 years after that, you know, in the UK, they began to have reports, surveys as to what impacts this ban on smoking in public places have had. Mm. And some reports show that people were now trying to actively quit smoking because there was a ban on smoking in certain places. So it did improve their health in, that, in those ways. And uh, research was also conducted that found that after that ban on smoking in public places, air pollution in the UK uh, bars reduced as much as 93%. So it seems to have, have, have had a great effect on health and of course air. Yeah, and then there's also uh, places that you go to, even in Nigeria, uh, there are you know, clubs that have a lot of uh, patronage that you go to and you can't smoke inside uh, because they they, I think they understand. Rooms, yes. Yeah, so you can smoke outside. Um, uh, they, I don't know if they have smoke rooms, but I know that you yeah, can smoke they, outside. Some, some have places um, where you know, this is just for smoking and they have, play, you know, they, they, they have a way they divide it where you can't smoke here. And you well, yeah, can't yeah, smoke yeah, here, yeah. So. yes. So, so I think it's because they understand that not everybody wants to be in an environment. I can that actually stand the smoke, smell you know, of And, so. um, you know, um, I... I well, girls always complain that, uh, you know, they have their old, you know, hair and clothes smell and smoke the next oh, morning yes, and stuff yes. like that. So, and it causes a headache yeah. for people like me. Oh, it does? Yes. I, okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, the point is, you know, from 2007, you know, it now became a popular thing to ban, you know, smoking in enclosed places um, across the world. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how much they enforce it here in Nigeria, but I think what happens here is, you know, people just voluntarily decide to place that ban in their, you know, business places and their lounges and the likes. All right, um, 2007 is what we shared with you. And um, of course, we also went back to the year 2003, 2003. With Kobe Bryant and that sexual assault charge. Um, let's take a break here and we'll return shortly. <laughs> 